help you get your hair back. After going into Hair Club and talking with all the representatives and the employees, they made me feel at home and so comfortable that I was no longer... Good afternoon, afraid. ladies and gentlemen. Ready to start my journey on helping my During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment and Virtual Public Hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas, the Credit, the, Ish the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Alan Smithies and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Asif Khan, Nadini Sankar Peralta, and Nazila Adarati West. City staff are also present. Daniel Antonacci, Simon Lamb, Jenny Kotas, and Adam Wills. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permission to extend or alter lawful nonconforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, T-Lab, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAC. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if required. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five-minute limit. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it is substantially revised. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application are allowed to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This marks the end of discussion on this item. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. Are there any uh, panel members here today who have any conflicts of interest they'd like to declare? No, thank you very much. And now proceed to our first item on this afternoon's agenda, and that is item number 13, 90 Allingham Gardens. I have one speaker registered uh, for this item, which is a yes, so, so Mollingham, uh, are you there? Yes. Sir, can I get your please, sir, can I uh, please state your name and ad full name and address, please? Uh, my my name Yasso Somalingam. 
850 Tap Squad Road, 351. Great. Thank you very much, sir. It's uh, very clear what you're, what you're asking for in the application there. It's a uh, front yard setback variance. Uh, there's no staff comments on this application except for an urban, urban forestry conditions. And no one has registered to speak on the item. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions or what, would it like a presentation? No, thank you very much. Uh, again, there is no one registered to speak on this item, so if I could get a motion on the application, please. Ms. Adorati? For you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with the urban forestry condition. Thank you very much. Someone to uh, second Ms. Adorati's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now to item number 14, which is 387 Greer Road. Is, I have... Four people registered to speak. Uh, the agent, uh, Mr. Malik, are you here? Or you try to just think it's not a big deal and you kind of ignore it. And I thought, man, I feel Mr. Like Ali Malik Zeta, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, thank you, sir. Could I get your full name and address, please? My name is Ali Malik, and uh, the address is 236 Lesme Road in Toronto. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, if you had the opportunity to read the uh, city planning report of July 1st? Because that report recommends refusing variances number one and five for the proposed building height and variance number four for the proposed number of stories. So I, I suggest uh, you give a presentation to the committee on what you see as the merits of your proposal in light of city planning's comments. To give you the hair you've always wanted. Yes, uh, um, uh, Mr. Chair, I, uh, we had a chance to talk to the uh, city planner and then also we had a, a lot of discussion with the uh, neighbors um, uh, regarding to this issue and uh, we announced the, uh, some changes in our variances uh, on, on Monday. Uh, and then the revised drawing was uh, uh, presented to the uh, um, to the uh, te application applic application technician, uh, Mrs. Kelly, and um, so they are. Uh, these are the changes we are making on on various number one. Okay, uh, hang on just a moment. Just a moment, sir. Slow down. Okay, you're proposing to change variance number one. It currently reads the proposed height is 10 meters. Uh, yes, we're changing the proposed height from uh, 10 meters to the uh, uh, 9.45 me 9 meters. 9.45 meters. And uh, uh, there was some drawing attached to this, but I can probably uh, explain later on uh, where all those changes is happening and, and where this uh, height is belongs to the... Uh, uh, okay, to hang, on, hang on a second. Sir, are there any other changes you're proposing to make? Yes. Okay, can you give us the changes first? So, I, uh, variance number four okay. is eliminated. It currently reads the proposed building length is 17.91. Are you proposing to change that? Uh, not the building length. On the variance number four, we eliminate variance number four. Okay. So what are you changing in that one? You're proposing to delete it? Yes. Okay, so you're, you're deleting the three-story variance. Yes. Okay, thank you. So variance four is deleted. Are there any other changes? And then variance number five. Okay. The height is changing to 9.84 under the old bylaw. Okay, just a moment. Let me get that. So right now it reads the proposed building height is 10.48 meters, and you're reducing that to 9.84 meters. Yes. Okay, so let me just get the changes clear then. Variance number one. The building height is changing from 10 meters to 9.45 meters. Variance number two stays the same. Variance three stays the same. Variance four is being deleted. 
and variance 5 is being changed from 10.48 meters to 9.84 meters. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, if you can, uh, if you can tell us why, what you see as the merits of your proposal, can you please go ahead? So the uh, uh, as the plan that is showing you on the screen, uh, on on the right side of uh, of the proposed elevation, uh, there is a, a part of the uh, the roof that only part of it is uh, uh, popping up from the roof, and then the uh, the changes uh, height, which is a nine uh, nine point. Uh, of your experience starting with your I'm sorry uh, the 9.45 I'm just uh, looking to my screen now or go to hairclub.ca slash free how about the project actually um, so 9.45 uh, is the uh, only the uh, the portion of the roof that is popping up from the rest of the roof, but the uh, the rest of the roof, which is 90% of the roof, uh, they are uh, standing on a 9.14. So um, uh, and then that's the only architectural element we have in the design, but the uh, the whole roof is 9.14. And uh, only the uh, uh, 9.45 is uh, applied to the uh, area that is uh, extend from the roof. If we can see the next page of this uh, document that I sent, uh, as you see on, on the side elevation, um, so exactly that's what I'm uh, the, explaining. So like a, uh, a one fifth of the, the front part of the elevation on, on the side is just uh, uh, going with that height and as only part of it is not actual roof. The rest of the roof is staying on, on the 9.14, uh, including the part of it. And an actual our, our roof is going to be on, on the 8.99 uh, 8 meter, uh, uh, which is a significant drop from the original proposal. Uh, and on the last page of the uh, our uh, document that we submit on the section, it was just on, on the screen. If I really uh, yes, and and on this epic and on this uh, uh, diagram, you can see the relation between the floor. So there previously there was a mezzanine above the, uh, the the study room above the entrance, and then that caused the three-story uh, proposal. Um, so we remove that area and, and then now is it just a two story building and then that's why the uh, variance number four was uh, eliminated. Um, I would like to uh, mention that the, uh, we had a chance to talk with the old neighbor on the, uh, 385 and then 389. Um, um, there was uh, some internal discussion between the owners. Uh, regarding to the concern and as well as the, uh, the height, we acknowledge the uh, boat owner and then these are the changes that we made uh, in the prop, uh, in our proposal. And I'm trying to uh, maintain uh, the uh, what is uh, actually uh, previously approved to the area uh, um, in its number of the uh, um, application, um, I mean, previously approved. Uh, we were uh, actually, we also had a chance to talk to the, uh, uh, the Sahra Association, which uh, the, the Red Pays Association that uh, protecting the neighbors. We had some uh, document back and forth with them and then they understand the changes that we made. Um, we completely comply uh, and then respond to the uh, concern that the uh, um, city staff and then planner had. Um, uh, there was a, a number of the uh, story and, and the height and uh, uh, originally they proposed us or they uh, recommend us to come to the uh, nine meter height and then that's what we made the changes on this revised application. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, com committee have any questions of the speaker? Tree, I have questions. Ms. Adorati. Um, to you, Mr. Chair, I just would like to um, to ask about the new section, for example, side south elevation, drawing A 
does this drawing reflect the, the modification that the applicant mentioned on the floor, like the height? Does this one reflect the height changes? Sir, can you, did you get that? So the, the side elevation um, that uh, was just presented on the screen, that's the, uh, the uh, revised proposed side elevation and, and the height, yes. Okay, so the number that you, you will revise today is actually reflected on this side elevation. Exactly. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any further questions of the speaker? Can I ask a question? Yes. Mr. Khan. Thank, thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, my question is uh, related to item three. Since you are uh, changing from three story to two stories, the platform, are you changing any platform number two from one to two? Um, no, sir. The uh, platform uh, is related to the, uh, to the original base of the building. And then we have two platforms uh, on, on the main floor and second floor. Uh, those are is not changing. Um, I just want to explain that uh, we talked to the owner. These are is a recess uh, platform. They are not projecting from the face of the building. And, and there is no uh, overview uh, from those platform and balcony to the front of the uh, uh, building. So they are recessed. And then we acknowledge our neighbor on 389 uh, Green Road for that. Uh, I just want to also add to this, uh, based on our conversation we had with the neighbor, we are going to provide a, a privacy fence to the uh, rear deck uh, for the privacy as well. Uh, this is uh, been uh, around with those uh, high uh, level of the uh, deck, and, and that was uh, acknowledged to the boat owner as well. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you are addressing 389's privacy concern. So you yes. will be uh, putting your opaque uh, screen over there. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll move on to our deputants. First person to speak on this item is a Mr. Tim Stinson. Are you there, sir? Mr. Chair and committee members, Tim has emailed in saying they'd like to participate, but they have not joined into the call, um, either by the name Tim or <laughs> on the phone number they provided. Okay, so I'll take him off the list. Next speaker on the list is uh, Lisa Rappaport. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Ms. Rappaport, can I get your full name and address, please? Lisa Rappaport, uh, Plant Architect, 101 Spadina Avenue, Suite 208, Toronto. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have the uh, opportunity to make your views known on this project. Thank you. Um, so I am from Plant Architect, and we are acting as agents for the current owners of 385 Greer Road, uh, Nina Rappaport and Dennis Calvin. And on their behalf, we'll be presenting objections to the height and length proposed for 387 Greer Road. Since our original letter of objection, um, which I'm assuming you guys have read, our clients have met with the architect and owner, as Ali said. They've mutually resolved satisfactorily how to manage their building code issues with the chimney and the foundation and trees and planting um, along the property edge. They still, however, have a continued objection to the overall height and length. We understand that the rejigging of the foyer level and lowering of the basement has allowed the elimination of the number of stories variance from three to two. And the new proposal has reduced the height 0.64 meters overall to 9.4 and reduced the height of the front wall. However, the overall proposal is still 1.84 meters taller overall than the allowable eight meters, making this a significantly taller house than anything in the neighborhood. And the taller part, the 9.45, is actually um, at the south end towards uh, 385 Greer. The limitation on height is to harmonize with the existing neighborhoods, predominantly two-story buildings with peaked roofs. Although the technical definition allows this proposal to be read as two-story, for the layman, it still appears as three stories with two stories over the garage on the north and two and a half stories on the south which isn't a zoning problem, but which is triggering the height variance in general. 
the higher parapet towards 385 Greer on the two and a half story portion at the south is where the height um, is least needed for the ceiling height in the building. That's a one and a half story space um, in, the, in the proposed building. The proposed overall height is over 20% in excess of allowable. The proposal is too tall and is precedent setting. Although the requested length is only 0.91 meters longer than allowed, the effective length, again, how a layman would understand it, is considerably longer because of the large raised rear balcony, which is seven and a half feet above grade, which effectively makes the overall length, not the zoning length, 21.5 meters, which is 4.5 meters longer than allowable. It's on the basis of the above that the owners of 385 Greer object to the current height and length variances. Thank you for allowing me to speak to the committee. Thank you, madam. Uh, are there any questions of the speaker? There being none, thank you. We'll move on to our next speaker. Uh, Sheila Harrison, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, Ms. Harrison, uh, you have the opportunity to make your views known on this application, this thank revised you. application. My name and address. I, I, can I get your full name and address, please, first? Okay. Uh, Sheila Harrison, and uh, I'm at 118 Feldberg Avenue, uh, North York. Thank you. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, I am a director on the board of the South Armour Heights Residents Association, which is not in Sorrow. And we always monitor a committee of adjustment applications because one of our mandates is to ensure appropriate development that's in keeping with the character of our neighborhood. The 387 Greer Road application contains three major variances, number of stories, which we're very pleased that uh, variance number four is uh, to be eliminated. Uh, and we assume that that will be uh, tied to the decision via the drawings. Um, the second issue is really the height. And then our third issue really are the two platforms on the front wall. Um, so when it comes to the height, uh, the design uh, is what we call a true flat roof. Uh, there are a lot of flat roofs that aren't truly flat roofs. They uh, are technically considered to be a, the equivalent of a peaked roof, but this is a true flat roof and there's specific zoning that allows it only to be 7.2 meters versus the 10 meters that you'd have for a, a peaked roof. The reason for that, uh, we understand, is a planning uh, logic that flat roofs have a lower uh, maximum height because they have much more massing at the upper portions compared to a peaked roof. So it's much more onerous to look at uh, this height. Um, Variance uh, number one in this case was asking for 10.0 meters. It's adjusted now to 9.45, which is minor. Uh, we consider this height to be excessive. Uh, it will impact the character of the neighborhood, and it will certainly impact the adjacent neighbors in the enjoyment of their homes with shadowing and privacy issues as well as chimney issues. There are true flat roofs in our neighborhood already, but only two of the properties in the past have ever exceeded the 7.2 meter maximum. Uh, our analysis showed that those two are 122 and 142 Ridley, uh, and they were approved at 8.81 and 8.5 respectively. Uh, these were both in uh, 2016. Uh, but that's even still uh, less than what is being asked for today. Uh, the staff report from planning, as you uh, outlined, recommends refusal of variance one and five, as the, uh, they state that the maximum building height provisions are devised to ensure a consistent pattern of development. And it was their opinion that this uh, variance is uh, contrary to the intent of zoning bylaw and potentially destabilizing to the character of our neighborhood. We would also ask that variance three for two platforms on the front wall be refused as this would be out of character with the neighborhood. I do not believe that we have 
any homes that have uh, two even recessed uh, balconies on the front uh, walls. Thank you for your consideration of our comments. Thank you, Madam. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, being none, the applicant, uh, you have the opportunity to address the concerns raised by the previous speakers. Um, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we uh, had a chance to discuss with the, uh, uh, as I mentioned, for both owner and, and the representative. Uh, and I really appreciate the, uh, the this communication done uh, before and, and uh, the prior to our committee uh, hearing. Uh, my uh, response to the uh, concern uh, with respect to the uh, to the shadowing and uh, uh, to the uh, from our height to the uh, neighbors. So as they show on, on the first uh, uh, speaker uh, presentation. Um, Sun is on on the south, and uh, most of the uh, the shadow is going to be on on uh, uh, neighbor on 389, and uh, 385 uh, is not going to get any shadow of, of our building. And then the uh, I think from that shadow study or, or the uh, the presentation that they have, there was some uh, I believe uh, um, um, uh, discrepancy between the, uh, the the red mark and, and the uh, the black line. Uh, which I think uh, uh, has to be reviewed and, and revised. We discussed the uh, the new uh, height with the uh, our uh, uh, neighbor on on three eighty nine, and uh, with the lower height, the issue, the only issue that they had was uh, the um, uh, the deck in the back. Uh, which is not a variance. Uh, we just uh, uh, we were agreed to lower uh, using the privacy fence for that, and then uh, providing the uh, the privacy for for both neighbor on on that uh, aspect. Uh, in terms of the uh, the, the building length, um, we are proposing 17.9 uh, in this application, and uh, based on on the uh, number of the uh, application that. Uh, approved by the, this committee in the past, uh, uh, we had uh, 122 Ridley, uh, 17 to 18 meters, one, uh, um, we have uh, a 154 Young Boulevard, 17 to 17.97, 17 um, we had a uh, number of them, I, uh, I uh, send this application, send this uh, proposed uh, presentation to the uh, uh, committee. There is number of application uh, that they had the higher number than what we're proposing. And I think with the growing uh, 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 the modern development in this area, the building link and then the height for the uh, uh, true flat roof is, is become very popular and normal. And then it's been uh, around uh, with this committee uh, from a long time ago. Regarding to the, uh, the height, again, for the, the true uh, flat roof, uh, we have a number of the example. I know that the Sahara Associ Sahar, Sahar Association was mentioning 122 and then 147 uh, uh, Ridley, uh, which 122 was uh, our office application, and then we uh, were, was working on, on that project in one uh, in 2016. But there are other number uh, of application that uh, been approved uh, by this committee uh, when the new bylaw was not uh, in in effect. It was under old bylaw. I can uh, 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 bring those number uh, to the uh, committee at uh, attention. Is a 147 Ridley was the height of uh, 9.19 based on, on the crown, is, uh, uh, crown of road, uh, number 165 Ridley, uh, 9.4 meter to the, uh, from the crown of the road when the proposed height was eight meters. Um, uh, sorry, the uh, permitted height was eight meters. Uh, we have similar uh, application on on Young Boulevard that was uh, approved from uh, eight meters to nine point thirty six. Uh, and uh, sir, sir, seven. sir, pl please don't yes. please don't quote previous variances. We don't we don't go by uh, 
by precedence at the committee. It's simply you have to stand and fall on your own merits. So it, you don't have to keep repeating what may have been approved in the area. That's not relevant to your application. I understand that, but uh, because the, the SARA association was mentioning about those, those applications and then they monitoring the, uh, uh, all the uh, proposed applications, I'm mentioning those uh, addresses uh, based on, on that uh, response. Um, so at the overall, uh, we think that uh, the uh, proposed revised uh, height based on, on the uh, um, uh, recommendation by the CTS Sir, staff, can you summarize? Uh, was, uh, appropriate for the uh, for the height on the area uh, the majority of the height is sitting on the okay sir, nine thank, points thank you very much here. thank you uh, I have a question to ask you, you you're, you've, you're indicating that uh, your your previous proposal was for three stories with a height of 10 meters now you're proposing only two stories but it's 9.45 meters so I'm trying to figure out what difference does 0.5 meters make in the number of stories? Because it still looks, would still effectively look like a three-story building for the sake of 0.5 meters. So the, uh, the three-story building was a technical uh, definition by the zoning bylaw that uh, make our application three-story. So we had two-story above the entrance uh, at the foyer and then um, including the foyer uh, uh, on their eye of uh, zoning is defined as a three story. So what we did, we removed the story above the study room in this uh, application, uh, which was uh, integrated to the, to the overall height. But with, with removing that, we were able to reduce the height by 0.5, uh, I think it's a 0.6. And, uh, and and then uh, removing technically uh, the the three story is not actually was a physically three story that was a, as part of definition of the zoning by okay thank you does the committee have any questions of the speaker can I uh, propose something I can I uh, no sir we're, we're in the committee now thank you uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker okay thank you uh, could I get a motion on this revised application? Now, let's note that the uh, change is the applicant's proposing variance number one. He's changing so that uh, currently reads the proposed height is 10 meters. He's changed that to re read the proposed height is 9.45 meters. Variance number four relating to the proposed number of stories at three stories has been deleted. Uh, he will now comply with the bylaw in that regard. Variance number five... The proposed building height is 10.48 meters, and he's reducing that from 10.48 meters to 9.84 meters. So if I could get a motion on the revised application, please. Ms. Sankar? Yes, good. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm willing to accept the application uh, uh, that was revised by the applicant and the explanations and evidence that was provided, um, such that um, I will adopt the recommendations um, for changes that he's made. Would you like me to re repeat them? I don't sir? think that's necessary. Okay. Uh, so those changes, and uh, again, it will be subject to forestry. Thank you, Ms. Sanker. Someone to second Ms. Sanker's motion? Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Ms. Adorati dissenting. Sir, your, app, your revised application has been approved subject, subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are now on item number 15, 1 Adra Villa Way. I have only one speaker registered on this particular item, and that is... Rasha Hyder from uh, Toronto Community Housing. Are you there? Yes. Hello? Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, members of the committee. This is Rasha Hyder from Toronto Community Housing. Um, sorry for the confusion. We actually have Anna Procopio with us today who will be speaking on behalf of this item. Okay, thank if you. The host, 
Thank you. Please unmute Anna. She will be presenting today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, Anna, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. We can hear you. Uh, you have uh, one, uh, you have the one variance for before us on the proposed setback. I wanted to know if you've had the opportunity to read the report from city planning dated July 8th. Yes, I have. Uh, so you've seen it, uh, the, the recommended conditions they have that the proposal be developed in accordance with the height and set site back dimensions on the drawings that it, uh, hang on just a moment here, that it be uh, proposal be developed, maintained in accordance with the landscaping plans attached to the report. And uh, there's another one, Toronto Community Housing enter into an encroachment agreement to the satisfaction of general manager transportation services. You've seen those conditions? Yes, we've seen the conditions and we're fine with all, with all okay, of those thank conditions. You. It's, it's very clear what you're asking for. I'm just going to ask the committee if it uh, has any questions or it would like a presentation. I note that we have no, uh, there are no speakers uh, dedicated to this particular application. So do I have, uh, does the committee have any questions or would it like a presentation? No, okay, thank you. Could I, again, there are no deputants on this, on this application. Could I get a motion, please? Ms. Adorati? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to put forward a motion to approve this application with the uh, staff recommendation and condition that you already read okay. through the three staff recommendations. Thank you. Uh, someone to second Ms. Adorati's motion? Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Madam, your application has been unanimously approved subject to uh, city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're now on item number 16, 93 Gorman Park Road. Hello, Ali Shakuri here. Yes, I have one. I have one speaker registered for this item, a Mr. Shakiri. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. I'm here. Yes, I just wanted to ask: Have you had an opportunity to read the staff report from Transportation Services dated May 20th? Yes, I did. And uh, yeah, they had no objection well. subject to you uh, adding some notations on the site plan that the driveways are going to be closed and restored. Indeed. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have four variances before us. So it's very clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. Okay, thank you. Again, there is no, uh, no one who has registered to depute on this item. So if I could get a motion on the application, please. Ms. Sankar. Okay, Mr. Chair, it's for you. I motion to uh, approve this application. And I believe it is, um, is this one subject to- Urban forestry, forestry and transportation yes. services. And transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Ms. Adorati seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved, subject to urban forestry and transportation services conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next application is item number 17, 26 Invermay Avenue. And uh, the agent is Mr. Glenn Rubinoff. And we have Hello. one person registered to speak. Mr. Rubinoff, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, Mr. Rubinoff, I just wanted to ask, have you had uh, the opportunity to read the city planning report of the 22nd of May? Uh, yep, uh, yes, I have. And, and, and are, you're, uh, uh, you're okay with their uh, condition that you develop in accordance with the yeah. site plans? Yes, we are. Thank you. I'll just ask, There, we have one person registered to speak here. I'll just ask, uh, I think you should give us a presentation, sir, on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. <clears throat> this is an application for a, uh, a new home at uh, 26 uh, Invermay. It's a corner property. It's adjacent to uh, uh, Almington Street. 
and uh, and Invermay. Uh, the lot itself is a little irregular, as you can see from the site plan, kind of uh, flares out towards the rear. Um, we uh, worked with uh, city staff, uh, went back and forth to clarify with them to make sure that we were uh, uh, working within uh, um, you know, the parameters of what they were looking for. Uh, the variance is related to height, which they focused on uh, in their report, is related to the elevation drawings where the heights are taken to the peaks of the uh, of the eaves of the uh, of the windows up on the on the on the second floor. Uh, so the actual eaves trough is below that, but uh, the variances are for the areas in the peaks, um, and that's why they're asking for it to be. Uh, um, uh, tied to that. Um, we are addressing both corners, so it's kind of a, uh, um, it's a type of application where we have two fronts effectively. We did put the uh, garage to the Invermay side, um, which is a variance, and I know that transportation has reviewed it and has no objections to the uh, location of the driveway in this regard. I feel the uh, variances we've requested are in keeping with the area. There's a, a map we submitted which indicates uh, in the area different uh, approvals that have taken place of similar um, uh, similar lot coverage, uh, similar building length and height. And uh, you know it's an irregular lot. And I think some of the variances are related to that, um, but we do. I feel we were, uh, you know, we've tried to adapt it so that we're not really um, impacting on, on adjacent neighbors and such. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? None, okay. Our next, our registered deputant is a lady named Lori Gottlieb. Madam, are you there? I Yes, Ms. Gottlieb, yes, thank you. Uh, can you hear us okay? I can, thank you. Okay, so, thank you. Can, um, you uh, can you you have the opportunity to give us your views on this application? Yes, please, thank you. Thank so I've you. never done this before, so I'm not quite sure about the wording. No, go ahead. Um, so backyard neighbor. Okay, I am the backyard neighbor, and my concerns are um, really related to height. Um, Specifically, so if you look at uh, zoning uh, bylaw number one and number 12, they're both inconsistent with each other. So there's a bit of a conflict there. Um, so my concern is really about the the value of the house. Uh, you know, when I take it to market, as well as it 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 is my front yard as well as my side yard that is going to affect the sun um, and the and you know and my privacy as well by height of it and station base in the first floor and the deck i'm for all intents and purposes looking into their house and vice versa um so i just my major concern is height, privacy um and the shadowing okay th thank you okay thank you madam i'm just going to ask the uh you indicate your main concern is the issue over height yeah so height and height and by association Okay, I just, I, I just wanted to ask, I, I'm, you realize that under the, under the as of right bylaw, he could build it at 10 meters. He's proposing 10.31, which is a difference of a foot. You think that would makes all that much um, of a difference? Well, I, if, you, if you actually look at the number 12, it's 10.71. Now we're going from a bungalow to, to a second story. So I just, uh, you know, again, and I'm not an expert or so forth, but to me, it seems like a very large concern. And that really, at this point, I'm, I'm just voicing my concerns. Okay, thank you, madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to uh, the agent. Mr. Rubinoff, are you there, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Sir, so, you have uh, the opportunity to address the con uh, concerns raised by sure. the previous speaker? Sure. Um, so the, uh, the two, there's two height variances. One is under the old bylaw, which is... Uh, Sir, we're having trouble hearing you. Well, um, 
Yes, I'm sorry. I'll try to speak up. The, the, the air conditioner just jumped in right now as I was speaking. The um, the height bylaw under the new bylaw, you're correct that we're just over a foot on that. Um, it's a, it's the type of shape of the house and the width of the house which contributes to that, which is why we were, uh, we were cognizant of that uh, when we when we designed it. We have to address that we're dealing with both fronts, so it would have to have a consistent. Sir, consistent we're losing thing. you. It's hard to hear. Okay, hold on one second. I'm just going sure. to turn off the end. Sorry, my apologies for that. That's better. The um, old bylaw takes the height from the road, and there's a great differential. It also, the way it calculates height is different. That's the reason why there are two different height uh, calculations and bylaws. Uh, of course, we follow the new bylaw when we look at the design of it, but very, it's very much based on the um, that little bit of small piece of roof on top, which you know, the white part on, on the top there, that's really the only portion of it that exceeds the bylaw. So the majority of the roof is, is within the bylaw height. It's just the um, shape of the house and being on a corner and trying to address two streets is the reason why we we have that variance but overall um uh, the old bylaw is not a good standard of, of comparing comparing it because it's a bylaw that's going out and we're effectively focusing on the new bylaw and we've also looked at comparables in the area and um, we feel that this is a minor a minor adjustment to what the bylaw uh, permits and um, uh, you know, there is a uh, the distance from the house to the rear property line is almost 11 meters. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I understand there's some concern about shadowing, but I believe that the differential of the foot wouldn't have any significant impact on the uh, on the on the neighbors uh, uh, sh on shadowing on the, for the neighbor. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll just ask the committee, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Kahn? Uh, sir, I would like to recommend and the approval with the conditions, uh, and the conditions are which are set forth by the staff, and they are saying development substantially in accordance with the site plan drawings. Submitted to the committee of adjustment attached as attachment one to this report. And number two, the proposed be developed substantially in accordance with the left side, right side, and rear elevation drawings. Submitted to the committee. Attachment two, three, and four to this report, as well as forestry conditions. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan. Someone Thank to second you, Mr. Khan's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Ms. Adorati dissenting. Uh, Mr. Rubinov, your application has been approved subject to city planning and urban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next application is 1076 Avenue Road. We have the agent and two area residents registered to speak on this item. Uh, I'll just go to the application here. Is Ms. Sarah Ifra there, please? Yes, I am. Madam, thank you. Uh, have you had the uh, opportunity to see the Transportation Services Report of 5th of May? Yes, I did. I did reply, though, to that, that we had a change to the rear deck. Um, I guess it was rotting over the time that we've been waiting to get to committee. And there actually are three parking spaces. Um, okay, hang, hang on a second. Uh, you know they're recommending refusal. Uh, yes, I understand. Okay, just just hear me out. They're, you know they're recommending refusal. Did you want to defer the application to discuss this with them? No. Okay, so that so what we'll do then we have people here registered to speak. So if you could make a presentation to the committee and what you see as the merits of your proposal, and also yep. the. Uh, also keep in mind addressing the comments from transportation services. 
Okay. So in terms of the variances, we don't have any changes to our variances. Um, variance number one, uh, referring to the height, the existing is actually only 14 centimeters lower than our new roof. Um, the second variance is an existing condition. We did not change the of our walls. We did not raise our eaves. The third variance is really the only one that we made a change to. And again, the change only is within the <coughs> we have not added to the main footprint or box of the building. Number four, when we talk about the eave projection, again, it's an existing condition. We are not extending our eaves. We're not coming any closer than they exist today. And then number five is what we were talking about with the transportation comment. Now, there's two things. When I saw the, the first comments um, from them before I discussed it with my client even, um, the idea that this project is on Two, essentially two main arterial roads with uh, public transportation. There's the Eglinton um, station that's going to be there eventually within literally walking distance and the Eglinton station that exists at Young is literally 10 minutes away, um, but they're right on Avenue Road. But in discussion with my clients, we did, uh, I did discover that they had a deck at the back that was shown on our original drawings when we originally designed it that actually had to get removed because it was rotting. And what they did was they just put a smaller platform with some steps down. And now in the pictures that you can see, and this is difficult because I can't show them. So I guess we've got to pull them up with that uh, report under transportation. You can see there's actually three parking spaces, but in none of the pictures are there actually three cars, but there are three spaces accommodated for now. Um, so technically, you know, we could remove that variance, um, although I didn't do full calculations to make sure they're exactly per the city guidelines for spaces, but we've got lots of space back there now, and you can see that three cars can most definitely fit there. But again, I'd, I'd want to emphasize the location of the project is actually um, on a property that has really great access to public transport, and we find that the people renting are, are people that do use that, so. Okay. Madam, can I, can I ask you, uh, the plans you submitted, uh, you're, yes. you're, not, you're not proposing to take out part of the front yard to introduce a parking space, are you? No, no, at the rear, okay. though, if you look okay. at the drawing that's, that's yeah. up now, so that deck that we wrote as existing, what deck has actually changed, so if we flipped through to that transportation report, um, you can see some pictures of the back and you'll see that new deck that, that they replaced the old one because it was rotting and it's actually very small. So if you look at the pictures, oh, maybe you'll have to turn your heads unless someone can uh, change the view, rotate it on, for the photographs so you can see what's there. Okay, so there there is no proposal for front yard parking. That's, that's yeah. No, okay, no, there is not. All right, not. thank you. Uh, does the committee have any question of the speaker? Being none, we'll go to the first uh, deputant on our agenda. Uh, Mr. John Cowell, are you there, sir? Yeah. Mr. Cowan, are you there? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Can you hear us yes, okay? Can you, can you hear me? No. Yes. I can fine. hear you, but you can. Can you hear me? Yep. You're fine. Okay. Could I, uh, um, you have the opportunity to make your views known on this subject. Please proceed. Yes, I'm John Cowan. I live at 74 Willowbank Boulevard, just around the corner. And uh, I'm supportive of uh, uh, adding another unit. I am concerned only about uh, the variance number five, which maybe is a non-issue now that I hear that uh, there are three parking spaces at the rear. But I would like to state that... Um, uh, although it is close to public transit, many people know that. And living on Willowbank, uh, I see uh, people arriving and parking on Willowbank regularly in order to get on the public transit. Uh, if there was another permanent resident in the area uh, occupying a spot on Willowbank, there would be uh, less people, for, less space for people to come uh, and use public transit, and there would be less opportunity for visitors at either the retirement home right across the street from at the intersection of Willowbank and Avenue Road or visiting uh, anybody else on Willowbank. Willowbank is already under major pressure for parking from um, 
visitors and people traveling downtown and using public transit or uh, working uh, on Eglinton. So I don't believe there's enough parking in the area and therefore I would uh, encourage that the committee require the re, uh, maintenance of three parking spaces at the property. Thank you. Hey, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, uh, the next speaker on our agenda is a David Spiegel. Are you there, sir? Mr. Spiegel, are you there? Mr. Spiegel? Members and Mr. Chair, Mr. Spiegel is online, but he did sign in later in the afternoon, uh, and we did not get a chance to uh, mic check him. Uh, there could be more to it. Um, I can also note on my end that um, though he is logged in, um, he is not um, currently viewing the WebEx as his main screen. Now that won't affect his voice, but I can see that he has kind of gone to sleep, if you will. Um, he is unmuted and, and we give him another moment. Uh, David Spiegel, if you are there, please uh, go ahead with your concerns. Mr. Spiegel, are you there? Well, what, what I'll do, Mr. Wills, is I'll hold this application down. Uh, we'll move ahead to item number 19. Uh, Ms. Ifra, are you there? Client, yes. yes. David uh, well, what, one, of, one of our deputants isn't no. responding. We're just going to take a few minutes to, to see if he comes wait, online. Wait. So I'm just going wait, to move sorry. ahead to the Mr. Chair, one moment, please. Wait, sorry, sorry. David Spiegel oh, is I'm actually sorry. my client. Oh, he he's just listening for information. Oh, I'm okay. I don't All think right. That he, he wants to speak. <laughs> oh, he's he's your client. He definitely has no objections. Okay, obviously. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'll go to uh, Madam. You heard the comments from Mr. Cowan. Would you like to respond to that, please? Yes. Um. So again, in terms of the parking, we definitely have space for three. These people will not be coming to park to use public transport, nor would the rear yard be allowed for people coming to use public transport. So the the comment about people coming to use public transport and parking on Willowbank is not an issue. Um, but the, the people that are, are renting these units will actually be living there. So the idea is that there are three spaces, but the point being that it was on public transport is that there is a very high chance that one of the tenants won't necessarily need a spot so that's why i consider that variance as a minor one um that we we do have definitely two that were shown now three as you can see in the picture but um i find it minor because not necessarily every person that chooses to live on a main arterial road needs a full parking spot okay thank you very much madam does the committee have any questions of the speaker being none, uh, could I get a motion yes. on this app? Oh, Mr. Khan, did you have Mr. a question? Chair, I, uh, yes, I have a question, sir. Can I go ahead? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Mr. Khan, go uh, ahead. Th th thank you, sir. Uh, Madam, you were saying that your concern is uh, about the parking spaces is three, um, but you have two, and that is not your concern. It should be your concern because you are not satisfying the transportation services, that is where you have to deal with them and satisfy and have their recommendation to us. Understood. Uh, understood. Can you can you hear me now? Okay, you can hear me. Um, understood. But what, what I'm saying is that I did read their report. I do understand what they're saying. I don't necessarily agree with their recommendation. But the second point to that was that we did remove a deck and we do actually have space for three cars to park there. But the point being that they've recommended refusal based on the fact that there's only two and the requirement is for three. But I don't believe that that is a, anything but a minor variance because we don't necessarily need three. Being on a main arterial road, the people that rent these units don't necessarily come with cars. So I consider the variance minor, and I would respectfully request that it be approved, especially since you can see photos of the backyard. Now there are space for three, but only two are filled. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd just like to advise the committee uh, and 
the memorandum from Transportation Services dated May 5th, it appears to me that they misunderstood and assumed that the applicant was putting in front yard parking, but there is no front yard parking proposed on this plan and that's what they were recommending refusal about. If you look at the comment section of their report, it refers to front yard parking. The applicant is not proposing any front yard parking. So it may be that they misunderstood what the applicant was proposing. But regardless, I don't think what Transportation Services says in their memo relates to this particular, the application that's before us. Anyway, uh, we'll take this matter into committee could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair, I completely agree with you and I agree with the comments and the evidence via the photos that were shown by the applicant here today. Uh, I do see this as minor and she does indeed have the three parking spaces which shouldn't limit uh, anything in the future. So. Uh, at this point, I'm going to motion to approve this application. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion. Ms. Adirati seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, everyone's in favor. That motion carries unanimous, unanimously, madam. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next item is item number 19. 154 McNichol Avenue, and we Hello. have one person registered to speak, and Arban Shipati, you're the agent. Sir, yes. are you there? Yes, I'm speaking. I'm here. Thank you, sir. I noticed that there is no one else reg uh, registered to depute on this item. We have no uh, staff comments on this application. The variances before us are very clear. The, uh, there's three of them. They're very clear what you're asking for. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. Okay, thank you. Again, there is no one here to depute on the item. If I could get a motion, please. So, oh, I'm sorry, sorry Ms. Adorati. Yes, if, if, if I appreciate a presentation or explanation regarding the building length, variance number two. Okay, thank you. Which is now uh, 20.75 meter, 72 meter versus 17 meter. Thank you. Uh, sir, did you get that? Ms. Adorati has a question about variance number two. Your rationale uh, for it? Yes. If you could give yes, us your rationale I, for I, it. I, uh, I, I prepare to keep this variance as it is because uh, I'm in front of my computer and reading uh, the zoning by law. 10, 20, 40, 20, which for one story addition, there are uh, number two in gaps. There are some, uh, some allowance there that uh, the building length for one story addition can be 20 meter. I don't know why the zoning examiner uh, put it 17 meter. If, if you wish, I can, I can read it I'm in front of my uh, computer and see what's zoning by law, which actually it said that uh, in our design, with a lot minimum lot frontage of more than 12 to, 20 to 80 meter, a detached house may extend beyond the permit maximum building length by maximum two meters in the extended part that uh, has a maximum height of five meter and one story, which is 3.6 meter. This addition is no wider than 50% of the width of the building at widest point points. It is less than 50% and at least three meter from each side lot, which if you see the side plan in one side is 6.7 meter, the other side is 3.75. And I don't, I'm not sure why, uh, why the zone examiner put this, uh, it actually it looks too much from 17 permitted to 20, 17, 73, but actually is permitted 20 and the purpose is 20, 73. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? We have no one here to depute on this item. Could I get a motion on this application, please? Uh, I note that there are no uh, staff comments or conditions attached to this report. Could I get a motion, please? Ms. Sankar? Uh, I note that as well uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll motion to approve this application. I do believe it. 
does meet the four tests in my eyes and no complaints from anyone, I think it's okay. Thank you. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Our next item is number 2012 Strathedon Road. And I notice that we have two speakers registered. A Richard Labrack, who is the agent, and uh, another a deputant. Is uh, the agent there, please? Mr. Labrack. Mr. Chair and members, Richard is on the call and he has been unmuted. Um, but uh, right, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll move ahead to the next item. Item number 21, 1157 Glen Grove. Uh, I notice we have only one person registered to speak on that, and that's the agent, uh, Gabe Ferrone. Mr. Ferrone, are you there? Yes, I am. Yeah, thank you, Good sir. Good afternoon. Could, could I get your full name and address, please? First name is Gabe, last name is Faraone, 2572 Eglinton Avenue West. Toronto. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, have you seen the, uh, there's a transportation services report of 7th of July. They have no objection to your proposal. The city planning report of the 15th June, uh, 15th of June, recommends that the uh, that we attach the following conditions that you develop in, in accordance with the site plan, at the, and that perme permeable materials are used when surfacing the driveway. Uh, I just wanted to know if you're aware of those conditions. Yes, I am. I've read okay, the thank uh, you, sir. read the report, and I have no objections. Okay. Uh, I just uh, just aware that we have no one who's uh, deputing on this item. Uh, the variances you're asking for are pretty pretty clear cut. I'll just ask the uh, committee if it has any questions or comments. No. Okay. Could I get a motion on this application, please, Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to move the uh, as recommended by the staff the property to be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan and west side elevations joint submitted to the committee attach, uh, attachment number one and two in this report number two removable material are to be used for the proposed driveway okay thank you mr khan Did someone the second mr khan's motion Ms. sankar seconds all those in favor that motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been approved subject to city planning conditions. Go back to item number 20. Is, is Richard Lebrac there? Here. Richard yes. Here. Mr. Sir, Lebrac. we're having trouble hearing you. You sound like you're in a tin can. No, I'm here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. No, okay, you great. just went, you back. So you went back. Hello? Hello? Yes? Yes, that's uh, Mr. Lebrac. Can you hear me? I can indeed. You can hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, Richard Lebrac, architect. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I'm just going to ask if we have. One other person who uh, has requested a deputation on this item, if you could give us a very brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Yes, I read the um, Ratepayers Association letter and I wanted to just offer some clarification on the variant three, which they are questioning. The setback for the front yard is already 1.49 meters back from the front of the house. What we are requesting in this variance is an additional three foot eight in front of the existing portico. The measurement that the city makes here includes a landscape wall 
which is really best understood on drawing A 2.1. Uh, for some reason, they include this landscape wall that is two foot eight high and we'll have shrubs and trees in front of it anyway. So I'm happy to clarify any questions that uh, the deputant has if and when they are ready to hear. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Being none, I'll go to our next speaker on the list, which is uh, Stefano Lazola. Sir, are you there? I am here. Can you yes, hear me? sir. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I was yeah, only calling you, you out of interest. Uh, I am. I was only calling you out of interest. I am the back of the. I'm Stefano Lizzola at 17 Glen Allen Road. Okay. Thank you, sir. You have the opportunity to uh, make your concerns known on this application. Thank you. I do not have any concerns. I was calling in out of interest, being the backyard neighbor, not understanding the height of this uh, addition. Assuming it's one or two stories, I have no, um, uh, have no concerns with it. Okay. Well, sir, there's there are no height variances involved with this application. He complies with the bylaw. Very good then. Okay. Thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, Mr. Lebrac, uh, I don't know if you want to comment with, with what Mr. Lazola said. I'll just leave it up to you. Uh, sure. The addition at the rear is, um, you can see from the site plan, filling in an existing covered porch area. And the length variance is for the additional new covered porch area. We have four letters of support, one each um, on at number 14 and 10, the immediate adjacent neighbors, and two across the street directly, which have been filed. So it's our contention that um, this proposal, which is really a set of architectural elements to transform the aesthetics of the front of the house are minor in nature as it, as it purports to the variances being requested. And we respectfully ask the committee to approve these variances. Thank you, sir. Uh, I note uh, to the committee that there are no staff comments or conditions attached to this report. If I could get a motion on the application, please. Ms. Adorati. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with uh, with just one condition that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the site plan drawing submitted to Committee of Adjustment, um, drawing number A-1.0. Okay, thank you, Ms. Adorati. And Someone to uh, second Ms. Adorati's and motion? And oh. sorry, subjected to forestry, correct? No, there is no forestry condition. No? Okay, then no forestry. Okay. Someone to second Mr. Adorati's motion? Adorati's motion. Aye. No, sir, we've already, we're in committee. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Sanker, thank you. Uh, seconds. All those in favor? All those in favor. That motion carries. Sir, your application has been uh, substantial, has been approved, subject to uh, the condition that you build in accordance with the submitted site plan. Thank you. We're thank now you on so item number 22. 424 Lytton Boulevard. I have one speaker, Mr. Bronskill. Are you there, sir? Hello, it's, it's Richard Wengel. I'll be speaking. We vetted that this morning. I, it was suggested two days ago I will be representing the owners, not Mr. Bronskill. Okay, so you're, you're, you're doing it in Mr. Bronskill's stead. Yes. And it's, Can I get uh, your Richard full name Wengel. and address, please? Yes, Richard Wengel, 102 Avenue Road, Toronto, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask if you've uh, seen the city planning report of July 1st, which recommends that if we approve the application, it be developed substantially in accordance with the side, site plan and east side elevation drawings submitted to the committee. You're yes, aware Mr. of that Chair, condition? We reviewed it. Yes, Mr. Chair, we reviewed it. We concur. Okay, thank you. Uh, just going to ask, we have 
no one's scheduled to depute on this item. I'll just ask the committee, uh, the variance is a pretty clear cut. I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to take the recommendation of the staff and move that this development substantially be in accordance with the site plan and east side elevation drawings submitted to the committee and attachment one and two to this report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Someone to second Mr. Khan's motion. Ms. Sankar seconds. All those in favor? Opposed? Ms. Adirati dissenting. Sir, your application has been approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Our next item is uh, 261 Hounslow Avenue. Good afternoon, and committee have, members, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hang on just a second. I have one person registered to speak on this item, and that's the agent, Mr. Graham Barrett. That is me. Yep, Mr. Barrett. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Graham Barrett, 1575 Dundas Street West, agent for the owners. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just had a just had a uh, couple of questions I wanted to ask you. Have you seen the uh, city planning report of 27th of April, 2020? Um, yes, I've seen the planning report. I've seen the transportation comments. I do have a, a brief presentation I'd like to give, um, which kind of adds on to the presentation materials that I've already submitted to this committee. Okay, well, what you can do, sir, is we have no one here scheduled to, to depute. Uh, I just wanted to note that there is... Uh, an urban forestry report of the 6th of July, which was reported denying variances one and seven due to a privately owned impact of your development on a privately owned Norway maple tree. Uh, are you damaging any tree as a result of your proposal? Um, yes, there is a private tree that is required to be removed to build this home for this family. Um, those comments from forestry were posted on the AIC page on July 9th of this year and uh, came as a bit of a surprise to us seeing as this item was set to go before this committee back on September 25th of 2019 and the proposed dwelling was even longer then. Um, we would have expected that urban forestry might have weighed in with their opinion before that committee meeting or at least perhaps before our deferred date of March 26th of this year. Uh, this project has been ongoing, at least in terms of Committee of Adjustment, since last summer. Had we been made aware of Urban Forestry's position at any point before a week ago, the owner may have had the time to consider a revision. At this point, considering the considerable delays we've faced, we would like to move forward with the application as is. We would ask if this committee is so inclined to approve this application today that we'd be allowed to deal with Urban Forestry after. Um, if they will not approve... Okay, that, that being the case, tree, then an appeal may be necessary. Yeah, that, that being the case, sir, you understand the risks of going forward with urban forestry. Yes, it, um, it, we okay. do. All right, then, thank you. Uh, with respect to, uh, I'm just going looking at your uh, re the report from city planning. They indicated that they wanted, they were recommended modifying variance number eight. Are you proposing to do that? Um, no, we're not. Um, we have met with planning staff numerous times regarding this file since uh, December. Um, versions have been sent back and forth. We sat down with them and had a meeting. Um, we've made every effort to address their concerns along the way. And that 11th hour request to remove variance number eight for the side yard setback to the second story, um, really, like I said, it came in at the 11th hour. Why this modification wasn't requested earlier when there was ample opportunity is a mystery to me. Um, in addition, this is the second story of the east facing uh, wall. This faces, this is a corner lot, so this faces Claywood Road. Um, the house and uh, the house is set back quite a bit from the street. There's, there's an ample boulevard, there's a sidewalk. I think we're about seven and a half meters from the street. We're of the opinion that this side yard setback to the second story is a minor variance. Um, and, uh, I'm, again, I'm just not sure why it would be brought up so late in the game. As yeah, for yeah. planning staff's request for permeable pavers, that is fine. We are open to that, but the owner would really prefer to keep the design as is and not change that variance regarding the second I, story. Sir, sir, can I ask the, uh, 
the, the side yard variances, are they more or less the existing condition now that you're requesting? Uh, just a moment, let me just a moment, let me pull up the plans. Pardon me? Just one moment, let me pull up the plans here. Um, yeah, looking at a site plan, you can see the, uh, the dotted line indicating the original home. It's approximately the same side yard setback. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, approximately. Okay, thank you. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any uh, questions of the speaker? I note that we have uh, no one registered to speak on this item. Uh, if I could get a motion on this application, please. Ms. Sankar? Just, Sorry. just to, uh, Sorry. Just before you start, madam, just uh, to the, please note that the applicant is not proposing to modify variance <laughs> number eight. So uh, if, and the only other condition from city planning was with regard to paving the driveway with interlocking stone or pit permeable <laughs> pavers Transportation services had a condition which was regarding closing and restoring driveways. And of course, if we approve it, urban forest with the standard urban forestry conditions. Thank you, madam. I'm sorry I interrupted. That's okay. Thank you um, for your help. Well, what happened? What's that? I'm sorry. That last applicant had some insurance issues. Was that? I think he was going to propose some changes, but no, he said he, he, like, he said he wasn't going to change it. But in his materials that he submitted, I'll so ask him. I think we should just get all the committee members to come in here from now on. If you can hear me, committee members and uh, members of the audience, we're having some technical dif difficulties. Please stand by. So if you go past the schedule of time and close the rate, it must. It must. Oh, so shit. what we can do though, is we can find the number of foot here. Start with the year. You know, we're, we're, we're on item what, 23 there? 23. 23. 23. 23. Okay, that's 23 there. 
Yeah, we're in the middle of 23. Okay. Well, I don't need. I don't need it. But. So you have to use the new link. So I just there's a I just so you have to create a brand new account just now. Oh, okay. So you have to use the new link that's built in. Okay. All right. Okay, I clicked into the event, so I got to register.
So I. Just, okay. Do I do submit? Yes. yes. Looks like you're joining in this morning. Join? Yep. Add WebEx to Edge. So do I join the event? <laughs> the joys of technology, eh? <laughs> Tom, it's kind of not cool that it does that, though. Well, it's only going to happen to you if you're connected to the online group, I don't know. What 
Because our time, yeah, it does that. It started off, it was set up that way. I'm sure we could set it up so it doesn't. It didn't have a timer on it, but it goes it, down after. It sort of does, I guess, yeah. It must, It has eh? a four-hour timer. Mind you, oh. we're working quite at the four hours. It could have been something else. I don't know when power the four hours starts power because didn't go out. we start at like 9.30 or something. Uh, what perhaps. time is it scheduled to start in our system? 9.30? So maybe uh, we, it gave uh, us a little extra. Yeah, we didn't start till almost 11. Yeah, but on that time, uh, on their time frame, on 11, uh, so we're okay, up and running yeah. there, right? Yeah. We do set up like that, so you have to tell them how long you want. You must have to. This, this has never happened before. We've had the labor room. So, the Jenny, what happens when the others, oh, hang on, here they are. Okay. I've got, uh, I got Nadini here. Hey, members, I don't know, can you guys hear me? No, it's fine. No. I can hear you. No, I, you're in here, though. Hey, members, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Hey, guys. So um, our original WebEx meeting, um, we must have hit a timeline or a time, um, the time limit on it, so it booted us out. Um, with that being said, we have contacted the four, three items we had left. I've sent them a new link to a new email or a new, a new WebEx event, and we're going to get that going in a moment here. Um, we're just waiting for someone from Etobicoke Civic Center Tech to come on down to um, let us back in as well, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, guys? So we'll be back in a bit here. I just sent you, I just sent you some content, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we don't have Mr. Tom yet though, right? I don't see him here. That's Hi, 
Hi, um, rate payers and applicants. It looks like we can see you guys all, um, which is exciting. I hope you can hear me. I can do a quick voice check on Graham to see if we can hear you. Graham, go ahead. No, I don't. Okay, Graham, I can see you talking. Um, so that's good. Thanks. Stand by.
Enter the event panelist numeric password, followed by pound. There we go. Good afternoon, folks. Sorry about all this. Graham, are you there? Do a quick voice check for me. Go ahead, uh, go ahead, Graham. Uh, good afternoon. Hey, good to hear you. Okay, thanks. And I'll mute you again. <laughs> All right. Jim Wallace, mic check. Yep, I'm here, sir. Good Perfect. to hear you. Perfect. We can hear you. Nick Stark, voice check. Uh, Nick Stark here. Thanks, Nick. TJ, voice check. Yes, I'm here. Perfect. Thanks, guys. We'll, we'll be operational in a moment here. We're just trying to hope to catch uh, Mr. Khan. Um, if we can't, we still have quorum. Um, so we will keep the ball rolling. Um, but we we're going we're to give Mr. Khan a moment or two more, all right? Just say hi to the members for me. Testing one, two, three. Members, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yes. Hey, Charles, we'll do a quick voice check for you. Go ahead, Charles. Charles Brown is here. Perfect. Great, guys. So we've got everybody back in the meeting that we need to have in here. So we're just hoping to get one more of our um, committee members on. If we don't, we still have quorums. So that's okay. And um, we'll go forward with our application. But uh, in the meantime, um, we're going to give our, our member, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Khan, a moment or two to try and still connect. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I guess you usually don't log into WebEx and MS, no. do you? Okay, so you can get out now completely now. Now that we've got you on okay. the screen over here, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna click off. Yeah, so you can just yeah. totally like you can just yeah and into any Can't event. Like leave event. Yeah. yeah, perfect. 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 Okay. So now we go. There we go. Now we're up there on the screen yeah. with you. Back to normal. 
Now, Azif is not going to be back. We're trying for him, it seems like. We're trying to get him. We sent him the attendee one, and so he hopefully will connect that way, and we can grab him to be a tenant member. But, I mean, I'll ask Simon. If we, if we want to start now, we can start now, yeah? Okay. So you want to start? No, no, we'll wait. We'll, we'll wait, we'll okay. Right now. We'll, give him, we'll give him at least a few more minutes. It's 325.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Um, after a short and, I guess, crazy hiatus, we are back. We do have everyone that is interested in still speaking on files, whether they're the agent or a deputant. So if I may, Alan. We are uh, still on item number 23, which is 261 Hounslow Avenue. Mr. Barrett, are you there? I certainly am. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Um, my apologies, Mr. Barrett. I mean, a little, uh, That's right. little technical <laughs> hiccup here. That was uh, quite the cliffhanger, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> if, I could, if I could just summarize, sir, you had indicated that, uh, uh, that whereas the city planning report of the 27th April had recommended modifying variance number eight from 1.2 meters to 1.5 meters for the east side yard setback, you indicated that that was, uh, you, that was not something that, that was compatible with your vision of the site. I think you may have gave us a presentation to that effect. We have no one uh, scheduled to depute on this item, so I'm just going to uh, ask the committee if it has any questions of the speaker. There being none, could I get a motion on this um, application? Please? No, oh, I'm uh, sorry, Ms. Adorati. Ms. Yes, Adorati. Mr. Chair, I, I still would like to get some explanation about this east side yard setback at the second story of the building. Which area of the design have triggered this and why um, this 1.2 meter is cannot modify? Okay, thank you. D did you get that, Mr. Barrett? Um, yes, I did catch that. Yeah. Um, now, this is the design that the owner and planning staff and the designer have, have come to over months and months of working on it, um, despite an initial deferral and a delay uh, as a result of COVID-19. Um, at this point, this would be another redesign, despite numerous emails, meetings, phone calls, et cetera, to arrive at something that we were under the impression was perfectly acceptable to planning staff. So we were only made aware of this request to back that second wall off a little bit once the latest staff report went up. And um, I did contact the assistant planner, Michael Romero, who we have spoken to on numerous occasions and, and actually met with and asked, you know, why the last minute request for change? This was never brought up in any of our meetings. And um, he really didn't explain it, just basically said, well, it's just a suggestion. So you can do it or not. So I really don't know why, but there's been a lot of effort put in on our end to move forward with the design that is what this family wants. And, and changing it at the 11th hour just seems strange to me when it was never mentioned before. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get my answer. Uh, my question was, which area of your design trigger this 1.2 meter setback? On that would be the, the east wall of the second story. East wall of the second story. Is it is it the area of the canopy, or can you identify it? Which area of the second story? Just a moment. Let me uh, make sure I got my plans here in front of me. I believe it's the entire length of the wall. Um, let me zoom in on my site plan here. Um, yeah, it's the. You can see where the chimney projection is. There's that 1.2 meters. That is that section of wall that runs along the east side of the house. Which, uh, sir, if it helps, Mr. Bear, well, which drawing number is it? Um, I was just looking at the site plan there, A100. A100? Yeah, you can see the dotted line at 1.2 meters just to the left of where the chimney is. That would be the outline of the second floor, I believe. Um, 
as far as I, as, as far as I can see, the area of the chimney have 0 0.93 meters setback, and then the majority of the, the building is at 1.2. Is that correct? Yes. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Ad uh, Ms. Sankar? Okay, through you, Mr. Chair, um, and listening to the explanations further, um, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application, but I will make it subject to number one, forestry, of course. Um, number two, to any conditions of transportation um, that they may perceive as uh, important in the future. Um, and as well, I will make it subject to the April 27th, 2020 staff report recommendations that uh, variance number eight will be reduced to, I mean, increased to 1.5 meters and the proposed driveway and interlocking walkway be constructed with permeable pavers. That's my recommendation. Okay. Can I get uh, someone to second that motion? Mr. Khan I would second that one. Some, uh, Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Sir, your application has been approved subject to city planning, transportation services, and urban forestry conditions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Now on item number 24, 12 Brayside Crescent. I have Mr. TJ Secura as the agent. Mr. Secura, are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you, Mr. Secura. Um, just wanted to ask if you've had, we have two other people who would like to depute on this application. Just wanted to ask before we uh, hear from you, sir, uh, have you seen the city planning report of 8th July, which they recommend that if we approve the application, it be developed in substantial accordance with the site plan drawings? Yes, I've read the report and I concur with the conclusions in the report and have no objection to the condition. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, since we have two people who wish to depute on this item. Sir, could you give us a, a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'll just keep my comments brief. Thank um, you. I did submit a detailed cover letter explaining the purpose of the application and some changes that have been made to date. The variances all relate to the existing conditions that have been on the site likely for four decades. Um, we have done some research in the area. I have done a site visit uh, we found over 50 other minor variance decisions within a 500 meter radius. The overwhelming majority of those decisions also include length and depth variances on the dwellings. The largest depth variance we found was 38 meters. The average of the approvals we found in the area in this neighborhood was 20.75 meters. This is an area undergoing some change. There is new construction on the street and in the neighborhood. Most of the new construction results in houses similar to the proposed, which are uh, larger than what was there and two stories in height. I am aware of the letter from the neighbor um, at 138 Milden Hall. I believe he is one of the listed deputants. Um, the letter indicates that there's support for the application subject to a few conditions. However, the requested conditions do not relate to the variances themselves, except for the fact that it is being built on the foundation that was already there on the site prior to uh, demolition. Um, I would like to address one of the comments made and it did have to do with a height of the dwelling. There are no variances in this application for the height of the dwelling, the proposed height, overall height, roof peak, walls, all comply with the zoning bylaw. I've already spoken to the planning report this has been a long process for the owners who do want to move into their new house. This was to be their dream house, an established, stable neighborhood. And they've already had to make major compromises to try and address all of the comments and concerns from the neighbors and city staff. It is our professional opinion the variances meet all the tests of the Planning Act and should be approved. Those are my comments and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? <coughs> There being none, we'll move to the next uh, speaker on our agenda. I have a Mr. Nick Stark. Are you there, sir? Mr. Stark, are you there? Mr. Chair, members, he is. 
um, but I see on my end here that I'm having connection uh, concerns right this exact moment. Okay, I'll move on to the next. Uh, uh, what I mean to say is I think there's a connection problem in general. Okay. Well, so we'll have to stand by. I'll move to the next person and we'll come back. Mr. Chair, what I mean to say is we should pause for a moment here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Your, indulgent, Ms. Your indulgence, Mr. Secura. Not a problem, sir. I did see Mr. Khan's hand go up. Did he have a question for me? He uh, might. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Mr. I have a question for you if I'm allowed by the chair. Mr. Khan, did you have a question? Uh, yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir, please go ahead. Thank I didn't you, see sir. you put your hand up. I'm sorry. No, no, no problem, sir, no problem. Uh, Mr. Sukera, my question is that you have been given permits in stages. One time, twice, three times, four times, you have got the different type of permits. Now, these permits you had, initially you had internal alteration, underpinning, and then you had the addition of second story, and then you went on to, or you had a staff work order. Now, what was not in, uh, in uh, in conjunction with the drawings why you were stopped so my understanding of the stop work order uh, mr chair to mr khan is that uh, there was a portion of the rear wall that was to be maintained from the original dwelling when the construction started the on-site contractor determined that that wall was not in a perfect structural condition and revisions were made to remove that portion of wall it had to do with the number of um, perforations through that wall when that change was made it was determined that this no longer met the criteria for a renovation and it was now considered a new dwelling and it all has to do with a percentage of the walls from the original dwelling that were maintained because that percentage dropped below a certain amount and i believe the amount is 50 percent a stop work order was issued until a minor variance was obtained to consider this a new dwelling. Now that structural uh, discrepancy that you mentioned, was it uh, all by your engineer or by the city uh, uh, plan examiner engineer? So it was a decision that was made during construction by the on-site contractor. He determined that in, in the engineer's opinion, it was a structural wall and it was okay to remain. However, on site, the contractor said, with the number of windows and the number of perforations through this wall, we don't feel that it was structurally sound for the new construction. And then the decision was made to take it down. And then it became a new house by renovation instead of just a pure renovation. Under the pure renovation, no minor variances were required. You know, the one of the community uh, professional engineer has uh, reported his concern about all, all of your proposals and he is not very happy with the variance number one number two and number eight i'm sorry mr khan i am not aware of any engineering report on this application uh, well sir you have in the neighborhood a gentleman by the name of george gordon he's a professional engineer and he has written to the committee his observation but he does not um, uh, he's not happy with the variance number one which is the length of your uh, building and number two is the depth of the building uh, number one he says is 43 percent more and number variance number two he is saying 28 percent more and number eight the first floor height uh, so mr chair just to uh, respond to that I am not aware of any correspondence from any professional engineer, even in the neighborhood. I'm only aware of one piece of correspondence from Mr. Nick Stark at 138 Milden Hall. Uh, with regards to if there is some other letter from but, some other uh, engineer. Mr. Security, I'm losing you. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I am not aware of any other correspondence on this file. And with regards to the variances themselves, again, I can't reiterate strong enough. The length of the building and the depth of the building is recognizing what has existed for over four decades. 
There is no new length or depth proposed through this application over and above what was already there. Yeah, so, so, the, so what, what, what in effect you're doing, sir? So what in effect, sir, you're doing is legalizing the. What you're doing, sir, is legalizing the existing situation. Mr. Secure, are you still there? Yes, I was just muted for a moment by staff. I think there was some feedback, but it's definitely not from my end. I'm using a okay, headset. Um, so yes, that you are correct, Mr. Chair. We are legalizing what was there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, let's not go into it any further. Okay, uh, we'll just check. We have two speakers registered. Again, we'll try. Uh, is Mr. Nick Stark there? Yes, I am. Mr. Stark? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have uh, okay. you have the opportunity to make your views known on this application, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair and and committee. Um, so, you know, with all with all due respect uh, to Mr. Secura, some of the, the facts uh, that he's presented aren't aren't exactly uh, what's happened. The house has been under construction for a year, um, and uh, I don't believe any of the delays until the stop work order were as a result of the, of the city. Um, the existing footprint uh, is being expanded um, to the to the south, um, but fundamentally, yes, the, the building is being uh, rebuilt on the existing uh, foundation. Whether the rear wall was structurally uh, unsound or not, I, I can't speak to that. I'm I'm also an engineer, been involved in the building industry for over 40 years, so um, I don't I, I've seen much. Uh, much much more um, damaged walls that have been rebuilt, but I don't think uh, you know don't have any objection about rebuilding the existing uh, wall on top of uh, the existing foundation and recognize that you know my concern is of of the height and of the drawings that are submitted because they don't do not represent what uh, the owner is telling us their intention is to build, and so the um, the, the essentially new house that's there other than the existing uh, garage um, has been framed uh, with a wall that's about 20 feet high on the front and uh, looks to be about 10 feet on the back. Um, and uh, the house is immediately behind our backyard and with, as noted in the staff report, the, the back and the the, the back and the side are kind of mixed up in terms of zoning versus the, the practical reality of the site. So the rear of the house um, currently has an addition that, that actually infringes on our property. So it's very close. Um, that that um, addition is, is being removed, um, but we are looking um, and, and have a fairly uh, shallow lot and we are looking right at the back of the house. The grade on that a uh, lot is higher than ours, so any uh, two-story house would dominate uh, totally over our uh, over our backyard. Um, so uh, we're supportive of what we understand the owner wants to do, uh, which is not um, reflective of the uh, drawings submitted exactly um, to, to build a bungalow, the the ten foot wall on the back with an eight twelve uh, pitch roof um, would. Um, is, is what we understand they want to build without provision for a second floor. The drawings that are submitted uh, are very similar to the, the two-story house that was submitted earlier in June um, and, and actually still include the steel beams that would be there to frame a second floor. So um, the other point was, was really in regard to how the permit was issued to put a second floor on the building given the current uh, zoning, even as a renovation, because certainly my understanding from previous Committee of Adjustment uh, proceedings is that to build on top of an existing uh, non-conforming uh, house for a bungalow to add a second floor, one has to uh, present the, their case to the committee. So um, we're not sure how that might have been uh, passed by the city in the first place. Okay, so I just uh, so you have an issue with the height of the building, as proposed by the owner to build verbally. No, as proposed uh, as as 
as shown on the drawings um, that have been submitted, yes. And I recognize that that is not um, uh, a matter of a variance, but the variance uh, is to put the wall there in the first place that would then build the, uh, oh, okay. would then right. build the, the higher height on top of. Yeah, but you, you understand he's not going, he's not going for a height variance. Right, well, if, if okay. agreed. So right, I would object to the, the, the separation variance um, um, if the height is not kept down. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions of the speaker? Thank you. Is there a Mr. Charles Brown there? Um, yes, I am here. Mr. Brown, uh, okay, thank you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, my name is Charles Brown, and I reside at 8 Brayside Crescent. Okay. That is the house immediately to the west and the budding 12 Brayside Crescent. Okay. Please proceed. Um, thank you very much. Um, thank you to the committee for allowing me to talk today. Um, I'm a signatory of the document submitted by George W.S. Gordon, PNG, that opposes the approval of the variances requested. Um, I believe you all will have seen that. Um, there are a total of eight variances requested, three to seven we considered minor. However, the approval of variances one, two, and eight are being opposed for the following reasons. Um, one allows the house to be 40%, 43% longer. That's variance one. Variance two um, exceeds the setback limit by 28%. In variance eight, the proposed height of the first floor exceeds the height limit of 1.5 meters by 22%. We too have also been concerned about this process. Uh, there have been a number of building permits applied for and as a neighbor who's talked to the owners, we've been told that this is going to be a bungalow, a story and a half, a two story house, a renovation, and then we found out it was a new build. If you look at the report that George submitted, figure 11 shows clearly a two-story house is being built on this site. Um, the reason for the stop work order is simply that the site, the building that was being built did not comply with the plans. And we have still not seen a set of plans that act what's going on with this site. Um, so, while it might be their dream home, um, it's been a four or five version dream home, and we just feel that the committee should not approve this until it gets a set of plans that actually highlight exactly what's being built on this site. And I'll stop there, and thank you for hearing my concern. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Being none, we'll go back to Mr. Secura. You have the opportunity to uh, address the concerns raised by the previous speakers. Thank you, Mr. First comment I would just like to uh, address is that Mr. Stark uh, said that I was incorrect in saying that they were constructing on the existing foundation. And uh, the plans clearly show that the dwelling is being constructed on the existing foundation. It's what's been there for uh, almost 40 years, and there is no intention to expand that footprint. Uh, with regards to the concern with the height on the drawings, these are drawings reviewed through zoning notice. There are no per variances pertaining to the overall height, the wall height, or the number of stories on this site. It is all permitted as of right. Um, how was a building permit issued to put a second floor on the building, even if it was as a renovation? It was done in accordance with the zoning bylaw. You are allowed certain permissions when you are renovating a building. The first permit was issued with the uh, drawings showing the permitted amount of renovation, even if that includes a second story. Uh, with regards to the second speaker, um, again, there's this uh, uh, ref reference to a document submitted by Mr. Gordon. I looked on the Application Information Center as of five minutes before this hearing, and I still did not see such a document. Uh, nevertheless, their concerns are uh, with what was there before, with the footprint of the building that was already existing. 
Um, the the two-story house was one of the original proposals. Yes, there have been changes to this proposal. They have been done to make sure that the drawings and the construction on site match what the city has issued under the permits. A stop worker stop work order is not an uncommon thing when things are found in the field that necessitate changes to the drawings. Um, it is my opinion that all of these variances meet the four tests, both individually and cumulatively, and that they should be approved by the committee. Thank you, Mr. Sakira. Uh, any questions of the speaker? Mr. Khan? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Sakura, uh, I am going to ask you a question. When you initially applied for the permit, and you submitted the underpinning of the in your proposal. Didn't the city or the officials ask you why you want uh, to do the underpinning? And you are simply doing the alteration? Because underpinning is the one, it means you have to raise the building and put up a few stories. And there should be a question from the person who is examining the drawings that why you are doing the underpinning. Uh, Mr. Khan, can I ask, I understand your question, but what does that have to relate to the variances requested? It has to do with uh, underpinning has to do that somebody has the intention to do few more floors and they have to see whether the capacity of the soil uh, is uh, capable of taking further addition or not. I, we can ask Mr. Mr. Secure, we can ask Mr. Secure to re, to reply, but I, I'm not entirely clear what impact that question has on the variances being requested. Maybe Mr. Secure can tell us because I, I I can't see it. So, Mr. Chair, it does not have any bearing on the variances being requested. The original application was for a two-story dwelling, a full second story. So, therefore, there was under underpinning required because there were going to increase the height from what is existing on the site prior to demolition. However, it was all being done in accordance with the zoning bylaw permissions for height. A two-story dwelling is permitted on this site. A height of nine meters is permitted on this site. There are no variances pertaining to height. So whether it's one story or two stories, the height of the building as proposed is permitted and always was permitted. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I get a, any further questions of the speaker? Ms. Adorati? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Can I get a motion no, on this application, please? Um, to you, Mr. Chair. Yes. I would like to put forward a motion. Um, first of all, I would like to give some explanation regarding the first four variants, building depth, length, front yard, and rear yard uh, setback. It's all have been triggered by the orientation uh, of the building and the irregular shape of the lot. So that uh, site plan that you, it, it has been shown is completely explained all these uh, variants. The variants number five and six and seven, driveway, vehicle access and parking spot, uh, we have these three variants, but transportation services have no objection to it. Therefore, I think that this application is a very minor application and my motion will be to approve this application with only one condition of the staff, which that the proposal will be developed substantially according to the site plan drawing attached to this report. Thank you, Ms. Adorati. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Khan seconds, Ms. Sankar, uh, uh, that moves approval as well. Mr. Secura, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Thank, for, thank you for your patience, sir. We're now on item number 25, our last item of the day. Uh, this is 613 Mount Pleasant Road. I have one person registered to speak, Mr. Jim Wallace, who is the agent. Sir, are you there? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm just noticing we have uh, you have a proposal here. It's just to convert uh, the. I think there was a parking variance related to the conversion of the uh, resi residential second story to an optometry clinic on Mount Pleasant, 613 Mount Pleasant Road. I note that uh, we have no staff comments or conditions on this application, and we have no one registered to depute on it. 
I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or it would like a presentation. Thank you. Uh, could I get a motion on this application, please? Ms. Sankar? Through you, Mr. Chair, I motion to approve this application. Thank you, Ms. Sankar. Someone to second Ms. Sankar's motion? Mr. Khan seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, thank you for waiting. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and to the committee. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Members of the committee, could I have a motion to terminate? Ms. Sankar uh, puts forth a motion. I'll second that. We're terminated. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Khan, good to see you again. Nice to see you, sir. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, Thank folks. You, we'll see you next week. Great to meet you. Ms. Sankar, nice to meet you, ma'am. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs>